Hey guys, this is Zora Water. Welcome back to some more Final Fantasy X. In the last episode, we went into the Cavern of the Stolen Faith back over in the end of the Comlands to go get your Jimbo. My wallet is currently crying, but you know what, that's fine. I'll find a way to get all that money back at some point. Uh, right now, we are in Remium Temple, where Belgamine is. What we're gonna do in this episode is gather up all the components of the celestial weapons and actually unlock the celestial weapons. Unfortunately, Belgamine over here has one, and we actually have to go through her gauntlet of ants to do that. We already fought Veil vale 4, we need to go fight everything else now. This also includes the secret Aeons, so that's why I went ahead and got Yojimbo and Anima before coming in here. But there's actually one more Aeon that we can get. It's actually that little, um, god, what do you call it? It's not- the Chamber of the Faith. That's what it is. I was about to say Cloister of Trials. That is not correct. Um, there is another Aeon we can get over there, but we actually don't have all the necessary items. And of course, Belgamine is the one in charge of one of those items right now, so either way, I'm gonna have to fight her. Um, so this episode is going to be very weird and a little bit choppy because we're going to speed through a bunch of things and I'll be post-commentating a lot of things. Um, when we get to fighting Yojimbo and Anima though, that's where I'll switch back into actual commentation mode. So until then, have fun with the speed through because this is going to be a doozy. Alright, so starting off, if this is your first time in Remium Temple and this is your first time fighting Belgamine in Remium Temple, you would have to fight Veil 4 before going on forward. I already fought her because we already visited Vermium Temple in the past, so we're going straight into Ifrit. Um, you can actually fight these Aeons multiple amount of times before finishing off again the Sigil. I only did it the one time through, and um, I don't think you don't necessarily need to fight Belgamina in, in the past in any of those random instances where we find her. In fact, if you didn't fight her, and you beat her Veil 4 and Ifrit here, you would be able to get the Aeons... God, I can't remember the name of it. But basically, the items that allow you to increase an Aeon's stats and give them abilities. Which, by the by, I haven't done it for any of my Aeons, so all of this is pretty very base kind of setup. Uh, st well, it, but I digress. Starting off, her Ifrit. It has a lot of HP, or I was doing a lot less attack than I was expecting. And, well, it's more of a physical attacker. He doesn't even bother trying to use any black magic, which is good for me. But at the same time, my sheep is kind of frail. So, what ended up happening is just, it's a lot of me using Heavenly Strike, because Shiva's not going to do a lot of physical damage. And I did not have a lot of MP, and I didn't know how long this battle would draw out, so I wanted to conserve that just for healing myself. If you have an elemental, Aeon, you would want to use black magic on yourself to heal. It took two overdrives of diamond dust and a lot of heavenly strikes, but with that, Ifrit went away. Pretty simple as that. Now unfortunately, the other Aeons will not be so kind, or at least that's what I was thinking. Next up, we have Ixion. And let me just say this, out of all the things, I'm really bothered that we don't have a water Aeon. Like, freaking Leviathan would have been fine. I think Leviathan existed in the past 10 uh, series, but whatever. So I didn't have a attributed water Aeon to fight against this thing, so I said, screw it, you know what? Well, let me just go ahead and use Bahamut, because I wanted to try to showcase all the Aeons that I had, aside from the extras that I got. The only one left was Bahamut, Veil 4, and Ixion. I couldn't very well summon Ixion. Bahamut, on the other hand, had tier 3 magic, so all I had to do was spam Water Guy. Over and over and over again. Now this Ixion, it doesn't have haste, um, like Belgamini's other Ixion. However, it has the ability to defend or evade. If it defends, as you're seeing right here, uh, magic and physical attacks will be reduced to a very pitiful amount. Like right now I was doing 160 damage. I don't know if that counts for overdrives, I didn't want to find out. If it evades, you just want to avoid using any uh, normal attacks or attacks that include physical contact, because I'm pretty sure Ixion will just automatically evade. I don't remember if that will increase his overdrive. Uh, in the end, I just kind of baited him into my overdrive, because Bahamut is the only main story Aeon where you don't need a celestial weapon to get past the 9,999 barrier. As such, 23,000 damage, Ixion is gone. And now I'll just kind of seep and wait for a water Aeon to magically appear from the ashes. At any rate, 
Next Aeon we have on our list is Shiva. It's only fair that because I pitifully defeated her Ifrit with my Shiva, that I would do the same by pitting my Ifrit against her Shiva. And that's what I did. Um, her Shiva had the same attributes as mine, not as much HP, and her physical attack is very, very pitiful. So her physical is very bad. Her Heavenly Strike is eh. And then the Blizzards that she ends up hitting me with were about the same as the Heavenly Strike, so it didn't really take too long. Um, actually, as you see here, I started off with no frost on her because she does try. Shiva does try to heal herself if her HP reaches down a certain point, and I just want to avoid that. But overall, it was actually really unnecessary. The amount of meteor strikes I did against this freaking uh, Aeon and the uh, Hellfire that came after it, yeah, that apparently was enough to just get rid of this Ice Lady once and for all. It was not even a match. I'm actually really sad that these Aeon battles were going very easily. You could have made this harder or better for your sake by having all of them prepped up with overdrives beforehand, but it doesn't seem like it's necessary, really. So with that, her fourth Aeon's down, onwards to the last of the story Aeons, and that is Bahamut. This one you might have trouble with, but keep in mind, in this Aeon battle, unless they, they somehow manage to get a lucky hit on Yuna, which I don't even- I don't know if it's possible, and I don't want to find out. But, if your Aeon goes down, you can just use one of the other ones that you haven't used yet. As such, I, the only Aeons that I have not shown off were Avail 4 and Ixion, and I'm, I had the Grand Summon Overdrive just in the case of emergency, but I just went ahead and used it on Veil 4 because I was not expecting Veil 4 to last long. She was our very first Aeon. She's the one with the lowest starting stats. And yeah, look at that HP. That HP is pretty pitiful, so I didn't expect to live past that. This Bahamut actually has the combination of Isara's Bahamut where he does a countdown towards his overdrive, but he also does like actual attacks and impulse, which is what I was expecting in our last battle. So it's just kind of like a ticking time bomb along with seeing if you can bust down all of his uh, HP that he has. I got a lucky dodge out of it to get another energy blast, but unfortunately that was not enough and poor Veil 4 went down the drain because I had that 9,999 cap. You can break that cap for all of your ants by getting certain party members' uh, celestial weapons unlocked. But since this is going to be the Celestial Weapons video, I didn't want to start off with already having that limit off. So Veil 4 is down, unfortunately, but I went ahead and got Ixion while trying to calm down my heart because I realized Bahamut got his overdrive while Yuna was out. So that was scary. Um, overall, it looked like he was very weakened. I put up a shield just to be safe, and we'll just pummel the crap out of him with Ixion's physical attacks. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can fight the Aeons multiple times as much as you want, uh, they'll change up what items they'll drop, but in reality, all you need to do is fight the Aeons and beat them once, including the extra Aeons that are coming up. So that's it for the speed through, we fought all the main story Aeons, time to go over to the extra battles. Okay, so we got all of that over and done with, we went ahead and beat all five of the main story Aeons, now we're getting into the secret Aeons. I believe they're not going to show up as an, a boss battle for you unless you actually have the Aeon in your possession. So you need to go do the Cavern of the Stone on the Faith side quest as well as getting all the Destruction of Spirits for Anima. And if you can't do that, well, you're kind of blocked from getting the end goal of all this, so have fun! <laughs> Alright, so anyways, let's go ahead and get rid of your gym battle. Yeah, 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 I've heard this a thousand times, Belgamine. So, Yojimbo, I hopefully it's not gonna act similar to how he was in the Cavern of the Stone Faith, because it was really pitiful. But I don't think it's gonna matter because I'm gonna use Anima against him. And I'm, it's gonna be very unfair. Okay. So I already used my Grand Summon, I'm gonna go ahead and summon Anima, who has 5k HP, my good golly gosh. Seymour's mom is busted. I, that sounded wrong when it came out, but you know what I freaking mean. She's really overpowered. Um, both Yojimbo and Anima have their perks, um, but Anima for sure, if you if you just want a really strong and really powerful Aeon, it's your basically go-to for anything if you want to cheap shot them. For instance, let's see, 
I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can do a normal attack. Look at that! It was just 10k on the normal attack. Her pain attack, or her pain attack, does a little bit more, and it has the ability to cast death, which it doesn't matter for an Aeon because they're immune to all status effects. I, oh god, Yojimbo, you don't have a lot of HP because you're already getting really tired. All right, so we he sent out his little doggy after us. We'll just keep on using this. Anima also has a variety of skills and black magic under her belt. Um, let me see if I have the chance to take a look at it. I do not because he's already dead after three hits. That's kind of pitiful, here, Jimbo. Anima's uh, pretty busted. So unfortunately, I won't be able to show her off to her false potential now, but we'll get we'll get to it at some point. Ah, All right. So what do we get from that? We get eight shadow gems. Well, Yuna. Now that we've gotten that over and done with, we have to fight Anima herself. Very well. Fortunately, Belgamine's version is not as busted. It's not going to do 10k per hit. Otherwise, we would be in a lot of trouble. However, it's still going to be really powerful. So bear that in mind. Now we could repeat the whole Shiva versus Anima experience back from Seymour's first fight, but I really don't want to. <laughs> I really don't want to do that. I actually want to show off Yojimbo, which is really awkward because I'm. His ass broke. Oh, and look at that! He actually, and I just realized Jimbo Anima has a picture of uh, Seymour's mother on the on the chains that she's holding up. That's kind of neat. Okay, Yojimbo, I need you to come out here. So unlike Anima, his HP is not nearly as busted, and he has absolutely no MP. He's a very unique case, but you know what? I forgive him because out of all the out of all the Aeons, he probably has the most gorgeous looking um, summoning transition that I've ever seen. I mean, for God's sakes, look at that tree behind him. Or, look at that tree that he's coming from behind of. Whatever the hell. It looks so pretty. I want it in my garden, if I had a garden, but I don't have a garden. Okay, so Yojimbo is a very special one. He does not have shield, he does not have boost, he only has pay and dismiss. And that is it. This thing only knows four moves, one of which is his overdrive. Apparently, this Faith and the Aeon is so damn finicky and so freaking greedy with the money, we have to pay him for him to do attacks. It's kind of ridiculous, and I am a little bit miffed because I am piss-ass broke from paying him before. So, it's like, it's a give-and-take system. He gets motivated by the cer like a certain amount of gil that you give him, as well as some other factors. Um, I think the options that you uh, had to pick when you tried to get him before also have an impact to that. It's a lot of math and formula stuff that I really don't care for, so I'm just gonna toss him 500 gil. And we'll see what he does with it. Well, I, he just actually flat out denied it and just sent out his dog. <laughs> you little cheapskate, come on. Okay, so he can do his normal attack, which is Daigoro, or he has two other attacks. The Kozuka, the Kozuka is the Kunai attack. And then there's one more that I don't think we've actually seen. Oh, good god, you have Demi. Oh, good god, Demi actually works against me. That's most unfortunate. Oh, uh, let's try 300. So I'm really hoping he's gonna do the other move. There we go. Wakizaki, Wakizashi, blah, blah, blah. I, I need to get used to pronouncing all of those uh, Japanese letters all at once. Um, fortunately, luck is not on my favor. That, oh my god! Uh... Excuse me? You will remember, I thought you could only use this if my over- if your overdrive gauge was full, I, um... Uh, excuse? Uh, yeah, this is technically his all-powerful move, overdrive. I don't know if there's any special attributes to it aside from being a really heavy-hitting, uh, physical attack. Oh my god, did it just cause instant death? It either just caused instant death, or I did not see the um, amount of damage it did. Oh my god! Stop. That is enough. So yeah, um, along with the motivation and stuff to determine what your Jimbo uses as his moves, um, ah, he actually tickets. has the chance of kind of doing multiple attacks in a row, and that was actually my first time seeing it. I uh hmm. Um, a lot of the other mechanics and whatnot also determines like if his attack will hit one single enemy or if it will attack multiple enemies at a time. It's 
If you have a lot of money and you have nothing else to burn it on and you want to use your Jimbo, go right ahead because it is a treat. Uh, we just got 60 stamina spearings, which I believe... I actually don't remember what this one does. I, I think it was a stamina tablet that doubles my HP. Uh, regardless, those are all the those are the extra ants that we have. Unfortunately, there's actually still one more, but we can get we can get it right away because we got the flower scepter from Bahamut. The doors are sealed by strange power. Try using the blossom crown. The blossom crown is something you get from the monster arena. Um, I actually can't remember the full prerequisites for it, so it'll be on the screen. Um, make sure you have this because it's that's literally the first thing it's gonna ask you first. You've broken the seal, but not completely. Next, we're gonna use the flower scepter, which we just got from Bahamut um, when we were fighting Belgamine. Now, here's the weird thing: is I I I know I said I've haven't gotten to the end point of this game plenty of times, but any time I did get the end point, I'm pretty sure I got the set of Aeons before. But I don't remember the Blossom Crown coming from the Monster Arena. It's really trippy, and I don't understand. At any rate, we've got a new Aeon Cindy. But that's not all. We also got Sandy and Mindy. These little triplets are the Maga Sisters, and they are quite potentially the most broken amount of Aeons, which makes a lot of sense because you have to get your Jimbo and Anima before you can get these two girls. So now that we've obtained the Maga Sisters, we have well, to go fight them. So with that said, Very well. let's go ahead and begin. Now, I could try to do this the proper way and, you know, try to go at them like really not not easily. Try to go that, at them in a very systematic systematic way of like, make sure you kill off these girls first or this is how you prevent some of their skills from activating. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna outright kill them. I don't really care about them. <laughs> I just want I want this to be over and done with. I want to get the sigil. I just want I just want Bogomir to be gone. I love her, but holy crap, there's so many Aeon fights. Oh my gosh. It's a Russian roulette, Choose let me tell Aeon you. Wills. Oh god, if actually if this was a Russian roulette, that would be terrifying. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a lot of money, so I can't I could also use your Jimbo and see if we can trigger the multiple effects on him. But nah. We're just gonna summon Anima. And being done with it. Um, the Maga Sisters actually have their own separate HP bars, MP bars, as well as their own skills, moves, and they act independently from each other. I'll go into more detail um, when we actually get the chance to use them. I actually don't remember when that chance could be, so that's gonna be real awkward. Um, however, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this right out. Mindy over here is basically a black mage. She has all the black magic in the world. Sandy over here is the physical attacker of the three. And Cindy is very bulky in her HP and her defenses, and she is the white mage of the group. So, in theory, you probably want to get rid of Cindy first. However, she also has other buffs and healing potentials for, like, White Wind and Mighty Guard, which if these two are alive when they... It's gonna apply for all three of them, so that's not good. What you actually want to do is take out the weakest link over here, Mindy, who's gonna have the lowest amount of HP and defenses out of the three girls. Ah, there we go. There she starts off her magic, uh, black magic trade. And Sandy, oh Jesus, Sandy managed to get two hits in there. Oh God. Now the problem is Anima might actually die because I don't really have any sort of healing. Likewise, I actually don't remember if Cindy has the ability to revive her sisters, so let's just kind of hope they don't. Uh, they're, they cannot activate their overdrive unless all three of them have the overdrive gauge up. So the fact that I took one of them down, it hopefully won't have an impact and they won't be able to do their overdrive. Oh god, that's her special move. Ooh, god, oh god, oh god, oh god, okay. So, this is actually Oblivion. This is actually, this is the reason why, out of all the Aeons, um, aside from the Maga Sisters, because I just love the whole system of, like, their three little sisters with each other, but Anima is one of my favorite Aeons for this fact alone. She has a lot of backstory with her faith, with her previous life as a human and a faith, and that really shows in her Aeon, because on, on, on the plus, on the top side, you see Anima with her motherly love, the mother arms, and the mother portrait. 
But on the underside, you see this creepy old hag who is beating the everlasting crap out of the Aeons right now and pretty much annihilate them. That's kind of showing like how like you have the motherly love and then the mother's tough love underneath it. It's really cool and I really appreciate that. And oh good god. Okay, now my only problem is Cindy. I don't remember- she's probably gonna do some attacking, but more than likely she's just gonna try to, uh, keep herself alive. Yeah, that- that shell's doing wonders for you, my lady. Unfortunately for you, you are going to die. At some point. Eventually. This spell me will not do anything. I don't have any buffs. Just- just hurry up and just lay down, please. Don't- don't make this harder. Don't make this hard for me, man. It hurts every time I have to use my eyeball to inflict pain on someone, okay? This is why Anima cried blood during that one cutscene. But that's it! We just defeat the Mega Sisters, and all is well. Stop. That is enough. Ah, you have made some progress. Alright, so and what do we get from that? Take this. We get Shining Gems times 40. I don't think we've ever actually seen these items, so it's gonna be a good thing for me to try and mix up with Riku. Thank you. Perhaps you'll teach me again someday? <laughs> That's not possible. You have already surpassed your father. There is nothing more I can teach you. My work here on Spira is done. Time for me to go. Send her. Okay, so now that we have beaten all of the Aeons, the Storm Aeons and the Secret Aeons through Belgamine, she doesn't really see a purpose in staying in this world any longer. She's basically accomplished what she wanted to do, which was to test out a summoner and all of their capabilities to see if they're able to kill off Sin. Issue. Um, once she's gone, she's gone. You can actually say, you can actually do nothing. And if you fight the Aeons over and over again, you can get different items for repeated battles. It'll be on the screen right now. Um, unfortunately, however, in order to get the sigil, you have to send Belgamine. And in order to get the option to send her, you have to beat the Maga Sisters. So if you say do nothing, and you, like you fight all the Aeons again, and then you actually want to send her off, you have to beat the Maga Sisters again. It's not a hard feat. It's just a little bit more time that I'm willing to spend. And that's not- that's not bueno. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and send her off. I don't really need anything else from her. I could get a few more items, but eh. It- I- I just want the one item, and then I'm good. Yes. It is in your hands. Destroy Sin, and save Spira. And with that, we have gotten the Moon Sigil, which means hopefully this is the right save file. My save files got a little bit wonky while trying to record these episodes, so hopefully... Yes! Yes, we do. Alright, so now that that was the final sigil that we needed, we have all of the crests, we have all of the sigils here. So, the only thing left to do is just collect the base celestial weapons and go ahead and unlock them. So that's what we're gonna do for the rest of this episode. Before we get too deep into um, going back through the celestial weapon requirements, please note that you must you must have attained the Cloudy Mirror from Vermium Temple's Chocobo race, as well as upgrading it to the Celestial Beer by talking to the family over in Makalania Woods. Go over to the top portion of Makalania Woods, talk to the sun, and that will unlock the mirror, which will, is necessary for the weapon base as well as upgrading the weapon in general. So starting off, we have everyone's favorite protagonist, Titus, and his weapon is called the Calic Bowl, which is probably not how it's pronounced, but oh well, I've given up at this point. This weapon can be found in the northwest part of the Calmlands on the little slope downwards. There's, a, there's probably going to be an NPC blocking your way. You're going to have to beat the Chocobo Trainer in, in the race between you and the Chocobo Trainer. If you've already beaten it with the lowest possible time, you just have to race her one more time and he'll move out of the way for you. 
to unlock its abilities, you need the Sun Crest, which is found in Xanarkin Dome right after beating Unaleska. Go down the stairs in the back and it will be right in front of you. Should you try to come back here after the events and you don't have the normal American version from the PS2, um, have fun because there's now a super boss there blocking your path and you're gonna have to beat him to get the crest. The Sun Sigil, on the other hand, is equally as annoying. It requires you to get the time of 0.00 against the Chocobo Trainer. Good luck with that. That's all I can really say. Next up, we have Yuna and her celestial weapon, the Nirvana. To get the Nirvana, you have to capture all of the capturable enemies in the Calm Lands. Um, the Moon Crest can be found at the start of the game in Besaid Island's little shore. It's treacherous off to the right. You can actually teleport back to Besaid Island and get that right now should you want. The Moon Sigil we just got at the start of this video is by defeating all Bogomine's Aeons including Yojimbo, Anima, and the Maga Sisters. So you're gonna have to do a lot of side questing to get those chopped off. Coming up, we have Orin. In order to get his weapon, we actually have to go to the area of the Cavern of the Stolen Faith, but not inside of the cavern itself. There is a rusty sword off to the right that you need to pick up, and we need to take it back to the Mushroom Rock area. Um, I suggest taking that teleport, I think it was like, what, Jose Pathway or something? It's basically the area that you get teleported to after the events of Operation Mien, and you want to work your way backwards. Don't go too far because there is also another super boss and there's no save point to save you. So have fun with that. But there should be a little opening right as soon as you get back to the Mushroom Rock area. Go up the elevator and put the Rusty Sword in front of the statue there and you should get the Masamune. In order to unlock its abilities, you need the Mars Crest from the Old old Road Meehan High Road. It's, you, it's basically where if you fail the Chocobo Eater, it's at the end of that um, bottom road. The Mars Sigil, on the other hand, you need to catch at least one fiend in 10 different areas. So have fun with that. Next on our list is Kamari's weapon, the Spirit Lance. In order to get the weapon in the Thunder Plains, there are three Cactar, uh, there are three cactar statues you're going to have to activate. I think it was some weird thing of the six of them in the second area coming up to Makalania Woods, and then the first part of Thunder Plains is going to be three stone statues. You want to find one that's glowing and hit square to pray at it. Then at some point in the beginning of the Thunder Plains, you're going to see like a very a very ghostly but sentient cactar. You want to follow it all the way to a broken tower to get the uh, uh, Spirit Lance. In order to upgrade it, you need the Saturn Crest, which can be found right after defeating Seymour Flux in Mount Gegazet between the little pillars. And the Saturn Sigil, you're gonna need to, need to do the uh, Rainbow Butterfly hunting quest. Um, these ones are different than the ones that we've done at the very beginning of Makalania Woods, and this can only be attained after you get the airship to go revisit the woods. Wonka's Celestial Weapon is probably something that a lot of people have not gotten, and that's because all three components requires something to do with Blitzball. Um, Fortunately, the Jupiter Crest, you can just get it at the Oryx Locker after the events in Luka, but I believe um, there's actually a deadline there, and I don't remember when you're able to get it. Uh, but either way, to get the weapon itself, you have to have a certain amount of Blitzball wins under your belt, and you need to get it from the cafe manager himself. The Jupiter Sigil is probably the one that's going to take you the longest. It is a league item that's only available once you've unlocked all of uh, Waka's overdrives and his overdrives are also tournament slash league items and they can only be gotten after a certain amount of battles. Likewise, Lulu's weapon, the Onion Knight, is also going to be as annoying but mostly for the sigil and nothing more. Um, her weapon can be found in the waters of Baj Temple after you defeat the boss who, whose name I'm not even going to bother trying saying and it's going to be on this kind of lower right section. Uh, the Venus Crest you can get from the Far Plane at any point right before, um, after you leave the Far Plane the first time. The Venus Sigil, however, that requires you to dodge 200 lightning strikes in a row without interruption, without a break. It's pain. If you have the achievement, then you must have gotten the Sigil. It'll be waiting for you right in front of the agency. 
And last but not least, um, Riku, Riku's weapon is probably like the most easiest to attain. Uh, her weapon is called the God Hand, and you can actually figure it out by it's it's the air airship password. Across Spira, you're gonna have like a little bit of these um, Albed kind of scriptures that make no sense. That spells out one of the passwords for God Hand. To get the Mercury Crest. It's actually a treasure chest in the specific antlion pit of the Zenubia Desert West. The, Mer the Mercury Sigil is the reward that you'll get for the Cactar Village side quest. Um, you don't actually need to cap- you just need to get all 10 of the Cactars. You don't need to complete the trials. And with that, that is every single celestial weapon in the game. Once you've gotten these, you just go back to the top portion of Makalania Woods where you got the Celestial Mirror. And you'll just want to go ahead and upgrade each and every one of them individually. Um, you'll it'll just ask for the crest first, and then they'll ask for the sigil. By unlocking these celestial weapons, you've expanded their abilities to far more than just saying no AP. And as such, you also gave um, certain aeons the ability to break uh, their the max amount of damage they can use on their overdrives, and I'll list them as such. Aside from that, that's all of the different side quests that we can do. The only thing left to do is just go, is just to continue on with the story, which we're going to do in the next episode. So in the next one, we'll go over to the high bridge and see if we can talk to Maester Micah. This is Zora Water signing out. I will see you guys in the next one.